On today's episode of Watch Jericho, I gotta have a talk with y'all. This is why you should never rebuild an engine. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today I am here at Auto Recyclers of Kansas, which is where I usually buy my engines when they're for flip cars. So I've got a, a couple places I buy engines. There's some local guys that are really good at pulling uh, whatever you need. And then there's these guys that almost every YouTuber in town uses when we have something cheap that doesn't matter. They have great prices and uh, they pull the engines real fast. They just take care of us, they, you know, a couple hundred bucks sometimes. I think the last engine I bought was 300 or 400 bucks. Uh, this engine for the Jeep that we're getting right now, they're about to load it up, was 800. And this is why you should just go buy an engine and not try to fix an engine that's in, especially a flip. Well, there you go. There's my tested, warrantied new Jeep engine. Load it up, strap down, let's get it back to the shop. Now, I don't need to justify this decision to anybody. This is what I always do because it's the most economical way to fix a car and it's probably the most reliable and I sell these cars the minute the engine swaps are done almost every single time. So that is why I absolutely do it my way. But I'm gonna explain to you why you should do it the same way. First, let's get the forklift and scoop this thing up. A little bit of fuel. And now we've got our $800 Jeep engine in the shop, ready to go in. This should be a super simple swap. And my total cost will be about 800 bucks and an oil change and some coolant. Now, let's go talk about what would happen if I rebuilt this engine. Let's head over to the whiteboard. We've got my Jeep here that I hope to make a little bit of money on. Obviously I paid $1,800 for it. Luckily, it's crazy clean because that's a lot of money to pay for a Jeep that doesn't run. But I'll end up selling this for about $4,000. So. 1800 bucks plus 800 bucks. We've got $2,600 total, throw another 50, maybe 100 at it for fluids, stuff like that. $2,700 is what I'll have in this Jeep. And that is not even making good money. That's a mediocre deal that I'm just doing for you guys so that I can own a Jeep for a little bit and uh, somebody will end up with a nice car. That's it. Oh, I spent 100 on headlights. We got 2800 in this, but that's not bad, not bad. Uh, it's still a, a little bit of money for one day of work, you know, and uh, it'll head out the door. But the question here is, should you rebuild the engine? Because I'm already taking a bunch of flack for it. And my answer is a resounding no every single time, unless it's a rare engine or something that you really, really care about or something you're keeping forever. If you're selling the car the next day, why on earth would you rebuild the engine? So we're gonna get into that now. Uh, special cars, uh, Lamborghini engines, usually you'd wanna rebuild those. I know I bought a brand new one. But uh, sometimes, if it's a V10, there's a bunch of shops that'll rebuild it. If it's the V8, no one will touch it. That's what I found out. Um, if it's some big block, you're probably rebuilding it. If it's some special performance engine, you're obviously gonna go through it. Even if you're just building an LS that you wanna keep or run a bunch of power through, you're probably gonna do a built engine. Uh, or you're gonna ship it out. You're gonna do something like that. This is the advice for fixing normal cars that are daily drivers, where you wanna make money or you just wanna get it back on the road and drive it till it dies which is the, that's almost every car on the road. I know a bunch of car guys are watching this and you guys wanna have your own opinion, but the reality is almost every car in the world is a daily driver that goes in the trash when it's done. So this is 98% of cars in reality. So here's where we're at on the Jeep. You buy a used engine, five to $800 for a used engine, a four liter for this thing. And that's kind of where you end up for a bunch of the old engines. I know a lot of the newer engines get really expensive. A new Camaro V6, $3,000 for a used one. Plenty of used engines that are three grand. But buying a remand is crazy. Buying a remand, this does, this all scales. The remand of the same engine, $6,000. Something crazy like that. Um, you buy an old engine like this, five to $800. It's got the same mileage on it. It comes from a salvage yard. They're gonna warranty it for you. If it doesn't start up, they're gonna let you swap it out for another one. They'll end up buying another car. They'll pull another engine for you. And all you gotta do is swap it again. And if you buy this stuff from LKQ, it's even better. Like it's wild how good LKQ is. But this 
came from a local salvage yard. I know they'll take care of me if something goes wrong. Our cost will be about $40 when we're done and I don't have to return a core. My core goes to the iron yard and I get a couple dollars back. Literally like a handful of, we're talking about 20, 30, $40. That's what the core is worth in scrap iron. It'll offset the oil in the filter. So that's my total cost all in. That's what I'm doing with this Jeep and that's what I would do with any other car. Now, you can always buy a new, a remanage, and there's tons of those for sale on car park for this thing, a four liter, for $3,500. You'll get a one to a five year warranty somewhere in there. If you buy a Jasper, you pay a little bit more and you're probably getting a really solid engine. They've got a great warranty. Uh, they, they'll hook you up. You got $40 in oil and a filter and they're gonna want a core back or, and they're probably gonna charge you hundreds for a core, three to $500 for a core, more than a whole engine. So if you wanna buy a reman, at least you've got something very reliable, you can trust it and you've got a warranty if you're worried. So you can just run the thing until it dies and be like, here you go, replace this engine again if something happens. If it dies, you know, one day after that warranty, you're out all the money and maybe you should have bought a used engine and done it twice or five times. You know, you could five times is what you could put a used engine in for the price of the reman. Or you could rebuild it. I've rebuilt tons of engines in my life. And this is where it always ends up. Everybody's like, oh, it's got a blown head gasket. You should just replace the head gasket. It's $30. Let's see. We've got a, I, I can show that to you right now. Let's uh, go to O'Reilly's. Here's the head gasket for this Jeep. Close the chat window here. Head gaskets in stock in stock i can run down the street i can buy a head gasket this thing will be right back on the road only takes about four hours to do a head gasket in reality it's going to take you like three days but uh fell pro head gasket a good one uh mls there we go that's the one i would absolutely run 60 bucks if you want to cheap out you don't have to buy the mls 33 dollars jeep's back on the road right wrong because we all know anyone that actually works on cars knows that when a head gasket goes you drive the car you don't stop you see the temp creeping up and you're like, I gotta get home. And if I don't get home, I've got hundreds in a tow uh, or I've got to call a friend to get a trailer that's going way out of their way. And just think of the logistics when your car breaks on the side of the road somewhere, it starts overheating. All you think is if I keep it moving, the water pump will keep moving until the thing runs out of coolant and I might be able to make it another 10 miles. You probably will. And those 10 miles come at the cost of the engine. The head's warped. So at that point, you gotta machine the head. So the reality of once you machine the head, it turns into a wall, you're in there. All car guys, people that have really built engines, machinists, mechanics, they know that it's a wall, you're in their game. And the wall, you're in their game is something I could only find on eBay. It's about 500 bucks for pistons, rings, bearings, and a timing set and oil pump. And I think this comes with the gasket set as well. 500 bucks buys you the internals. Can't just do internals though. You already know you're going to your machine shop and you have to have the head decked. That's step one, because the head's warped. The head's definitely warped. I mean, this thing barely even turns over at this point. So it's, you know, probably no compression. Uh, the oil smells like a fire happened inside the engine. It's done. Every single part of this engine is done. It probably wasn't oiling correctly. I'd say the crank's gone. Anyway, back to the, back to the list here. The reality, heads and the block are worked. So everybody, all the shade tree mechanics are gonna do a head gasket. They're gonna you know, try to deck the head with sandpaper, which isn't a thing, it has to be milled down. That's the only way to do it properly if you care about your engines at all. Um, you don't know how bad the damage is until it's apart. And a lot of those guys are gonna put a head gasket and deck the head with sandpaper on like a straight edge and say it's good and put it back together. And then it's gonna fail in about 500 miles or probably even less. It'll probably fail within the first 50 miles. Take a zero off of that. That's how bad a head gasket swap goes at almost every single time. You don't know how bad the damage is. In reality, it might've you know, had a bunch of coolant in the oil, the bearings are wiped, now the crank got hot, and then you're gonna send it over to the machinist. You're gonna need a top to bottom gasket set for you to reassemble it. Then you're gonna get into the rotating assembly and they're gonna Magnaflex the crank and they're gonna Magnaflex the block. And you're gonna find out that the block might have grown and been distorted a little bit. So they're gonna bore the cylinders and then they're gonna hone them. And it's gotta, it's gotta have a new set of cross hatch and everything like that. You need a new surface for your new pistons and rings to run it. You're gonna find out the crank got hot and cracked. So you're gonna put a crank in it, which I don't think was on there. I'm pretty sure there was no crank on there. So add in another 200 bucks for a crank. 
And then, uh, of course, the machinist is busy. If you ask for a rush, he might be able to do you a favor. He might be able to get it back to you in a week. Uh, a really, really good friend machinist, you might get it back in two days. You'll be lucky. And it'll cost you about 1500 bucks after the machine bill and your parts. It's just what it's gonna cost. You've got at least 500 at the machinist. Happens every time. You take it in, you're like, I just need the head decked. And then they're like, well, you should bring the block. And then they check the block and they're like, well, we gotta deck the block. Then they're gonna want a thicker head gasket. They're gonna wanna do everything. You will end up putting $1,500 on that engine. I guarantee it. It happens every single time. I've done tons of these. And every time I put $1,500 to $2,000 in the engine build. Now you can trust it. It's a new engine. Everything's perfect, you know, as long as you can trust your machinist and you can trust you to do the assembly. You own the car from then on. You'll probably never touch the engine again. You won. That's awesome. That's not what you want to do for this. I want this car to be gone by the end of next week because the engine should go in in a day or two and uh, we'll finish up a couple more things, detail it and send it. That's how fast a car flip should go for anybody, especially when they need engines. So used engine, $800 all in, it's done. Reman engine, you get your warranty, 3,500 bucks. Rebuild engine, 1,500 bucks and you lose maybe a lift for a month, you lose your shop space for a month. It is the worst possible option you could ever take on a normal car. Put an engine in it every time. Call a salvage yard. For me, luckily I've got some local guys for the cheap engines. I always just run over there. They had this engine in stock. It took all of one hour for them to pull it off a shelf and stick it in the back of my truck. I called that morning, they had it ready, run over there, load it up and we're good. Just minutes. $800 minutes of my time. And my time, you better count your time as something. My time is worth some money. So that's, that's all it took me. And then all of my performance engines come from J&J Auto Wrecking. Great friends, they're up in Ohio, but an engine like this is not worth shipping. That shipping almost costs them more than the engine costs. I don't wanna do that to them, so I don't even bother them. I didn't send a text, didn't ask about it or anything. It's a cheap engine going in a car. I'm not keeping, I'm not gonna bother them about shipping me uh, an engine. I call them for LSs, you know, that a V6 going in a Camaro, anything like that, anything high-end BMW engines, that's absolutely coming from them every time because they are awesome, easy to work with, and they guarantee their engines and they, they'll start them. And sometimes I get compression tests. I, it doesn't get better than that. I can trust whatever they send. So there you have it. That is why you do this and you don't do this. I know I've explained this a few times before, but I wanted to show you guys the definitive numbers so you could know that this is truly an economical decision like this is an economy of scale the faster you can make the cars run the faster you can get the cars out the door the more money you make the more cool stuff you get to drive it's just better and that's what you should be concentrating on is fixing them and getting them out the door because you know the thing's gonna run until the next person doesn't care anymore so that is where you draw the line I get a lot of comments saying you don't know how to rebuild an engine or you should have rebuilt the engine I'm just here to say that's my reasoning and now you know that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchthearago.com where you can get cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Game plan is to swap that thing in this weekend. Unfortunately, this shield for the starter got all bent up. I think I can actually bend that back. If not, we have spare parts, like I said. You know, if anything's wrong, I have an extra everything, which is the best. Also, the Sunbeam Tiger got re-lettered. The bumpers are on. They're putting all the lights on right now. They have PPFs, the headlight domes there. Is that not wild? So they're finishing all that PPF work. Uh, the hood's PPF'd. This thing's looking sweet. The real Aztec update video is coming soon. I've been working like crazy, just like the entire last week, making this thing perfect again.